Hey New Life, my name is Dan Levy and alongside my wife Joy, we get the honor and the privilege to lead and pastor both our young adults department and our internship program here at New Life Church and we really love what we get to do. Hey, today we're going to be talking about storms and we're going to be learning what God teaches us from his word when we face circumstances that feel as if they are out of control in our lives. In Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, this is going to be our text for today, uh, we see a fascinating story about the disciples and about Jesus as they find themselves in the middle of a storm on the Sea of Galilee. Mark chapter 4, 35 says this, That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall, note that, that phrase right there, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. I want you to note something here with me. This is a real storm that they are in the middle of right now. Not something fake, not something little. No, this is a serious and real storm that they are facing. The story continues on and it says, the disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown. Don't you care if we drown? Have you ever been in a circumstance in life where, man, it felt like everything was out of control. It even felt like maybe God was sleeping on the job and maybe you cried out to God, God, where are you in the middle of this? Are you in control of the circumstances that I am facing through, that I am walking through in my life? Many of us have been there at one point or another in our story and perhaps the circumstances that are going on in our world right now could feel just like that but today I want to say this that just as we see in this passage the storm wasn't a surprise to Jesus the storm didn't have power over Jesus no just as we're walking through these circumstances in our world right now coronavirus was not a surprise to God right it was not a surprise to God whatsoever he foresaw this, he knew about it, and he is in control. C continuing on with our passage. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Sit with that, that word for a second. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? A couple couple points that I, I really wanna draw out from, from this passage is we need to, first off, we need to be like the disciples in this, that when we have fear in our lives, we need to run to Jesus. The disciples ran immediately to the stern of the boat and they expressed their concern to him. Teacher, where are you in the middle of this right now? Maybe there's fears in your life right now surrounding anything. I want to encourage you in this season, bring your fears to Jesus. You can be, you can go to Jesus knowing that he will hear your fears with concern and care for you in your life. But the second thing I want to say is this, that even when circumstances feel as if they are out of control in your life, never let the presence of your storm cause you to doubt the presence of your God, right? Even when it feels like things were out of control as the disciples were in the middle of this furious storm, right? They ran to Jesus. And in our lives, we need to run to Jesus knowing that he will listen to us. He will answer our requests. He will be with us in the middle of the storm. They knew he was in the middle of the storm with them in this story. The other piece about this that I want to draw a third thing is notice the difference in this passage between the disciples and Jesus, right? So we're called to bring our cares to Jesus. First Peter would say it this way, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you, right? Instead of carrying your problems, cast your fear, cast your stress, cast your anxiety onto him because he cares for you. The disciples do this, but the disciples have to go a step further. They also have to learn how Jesus is. We're called to be like Jesus after we cast our cares upon him. And notice Jesus, Jesus wasn't afraid. Jesus wasn't terrified. He wasn't in a panic over everything, the storm, the real threat of the storm that they were facing. No, he was so much so at peace that he was sleeping in the boat. You know, I wanna be like Jesus in my life that no matter what comes and takes place in my story, whatever I face in my life, that whenever those things come, I wanna be like Jesus where I exist in perfect peace 
in the middle of the storm. The disciples were terrified, frantic, running around, but Jesus was asleep. Why? Because he trusted in his heavenly Father. He trusted in his heavenly Father. In fact, in, in verse 40, Jesus notes that there is a connection between our fear and our lack of faith. He says, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I'm convinced today that great faith in our life also equals little fear in our life. And often when there is great fear in our life, it is also the evidence of little faith in our life. And so we have to constantly go back to Jesus and bring our fears to him, cast our cares upon him, and he will infuse us with faith in our lives. And I, I want to note that this is so important to do in this season of life right now is everything feels like it is spiraling out of control. We need to know that there is a God on the throne in control of everything. And we need to live our lives from that reality. We need to live our lives from the truth and the reality of the gospel that Jesus Christ is on the throne, that he's going to work everything together for the good of those who love him. And that means our lives as well. And so my encouragement to you, church fam, is that as you spend time with your family in this season, be careful about the words that you share. Speak faith, not fear, to your family. Be people not of despair, but people of hope. Be, be people not of, of depression or sadness, but rather people of joy. What, what are you carrying to the people around you? Because what you carry to people will be reduplicated to the people around you. Just as Jesus brought still to the storm and to the storm within the disciples. We can also be people by the power of the Holy Spirit who brings still to the lives of those that are around us. And so in this season of Life Church, let, let's be people who carry the peace and the love and the grace and the power of God everywhere we go to everyone we meet. This is an opportune time for us to live as faithful witnesses for the gospel. Hey, let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you that you are in control of our lives. We thank you that you are in control of this world. And God, today we even bring whatever fear we might have, we bring it to the throne room of grace, knowing that first we have access to you, but second, that you're in control. And so God, I pray that you would bring resolution in this. God, that you would bring strength to us. And God, I pray for opportunity to be faithful witnesses of the gospel, that we would be carriers of your peace, not carriers of fear, carriers of hope, not carriers of despair, carriers of love, not carriers of hate, that we would be carriers of the culture of heaven as you download the attributes of yourself into us. May we be carriers of those realities. We love you so much, God. I pray for each and every one that's listening to this right now, and I speak blessing over them in the mighty name of Jesus, protection over their house, and fruitful opportunity for the kingdom of God. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we say these things. Amen. God bless you.